We did have a home that was right on the edge of the creek. I do remember fears, actually, of, of going out the back door uh, because uh, at that time, uh, people who lived along the creek would just toss their garbage into the creek. And uh, uh, so if you had things cleaned up from the supper table, uh, you would walk out to the back door and go over and throw them in the creek. But it also was something that attracted rats, rodents, big ones. <laughs> and uh, so often I would see them uh, before I could possibly get back into the house. I can also uh, remember being rescued uh, uh, with a, uh, uh, someone coming in a, in a boat uh, to the front of the house and evacuating us until the floodwaters would recede. And then the messy job of cleaning up the mud that had come into the house. Lots of memories that were good memories too, because my mother made sure that we, uh, we survived it all. <laughs>
uh, at uh, Jones, uh, a junior high school. Uh, the parent support was still there, but the, uh, the students uh, uh, still uh, were almost as old as I was. This was the zoot suit uh, period of, uh, of uh, development for those young people who, who wore chains that hung down from their uh, belt. And uh, not that they were using them in any threatening way, but to me, for them to come in <laughs> jangling and <laughs> with the chains that, uh, uh, and it was my fellow teachers that helped me understand that that's just style. And it was a wonderful two years because my fellow teachers made a, a real teacher out of me that understood my students much better. Anyone who uh works with Thelma or knows Thelma, knows she's very gracious and uh, very easy to work with, uh, very non-judgmental. Uh, I'm just in awe every day of her energy and her commitment to literacy and her creative mind. I mean, she just is constantly thinking of new ideas. I was still teaching in, in Gibbs Elementary School. I knew that uh, there would be many, many, many other schools and teachers who would find that there was, their students were still ones who, whose problems could not be met uh, by the teacher alone. It was an original grant from the State Department of Education, but at that time I think there were 20-some elementary schools, so it was spreading myself pretty thin. So if a teacher had a, a student that they were not reaching or a family that was not being as willing to uh, uh, cooperate as they would like, then I would be assigned a case at that building. So, uh, but they were spread all over town. Uh, my son used to tell me, and my husband too, you should be a taxi driver, because now I knew all the streets and the alleys and <laughs> uh, so that I could find my way quickly from not just to the school building, but to the students' home. And you could easily discern, you know, where, where are the wealthy people, where are the big homes, where are the nice gardens, where are uh, the homes that uh, uh, are in need of repair and, and so on. In Canton, as often is the case with many cities, there is an area that's known as the kind of a port of entry. And for Canton, especially for particular minorities, which would include Italians and Greeks and African Americans and Jews, um, particularly Russian Jews, that was the Southeast End. In the Northwest End, and uh, a, a, a friend of mine who uh, is serving on city council called it the Cake Eaters District. That those would be predominantly white, um, and while I'm generalizing, they would tend to be English or uh, old stock German or maybe French or definitely Western European. So if she's driving from one part of town to another, she would notice um, a very distinctive ethnic and sometimes racial mix. I, I soon learned how what was available to children who came from one quad quadrant of the city as compared to another. Poverty is a, is a major, major handicap for, for, uh, for students. Um, I, had, uh, I had done home visitation as, as a teacher. I was certainly aware of uh, uh, the importance of, of uh, uh, getting to know the family, and that was my idea that it, it's one thing to meet a child in a classroom or in a in the school building, but it's another to meet them with the parent at home. You had to get to the parent, to know the parent, and to get the parent on it, to be a, an equal partner in, in solving any problems uh, that a child might have. I was, uh, felt perfectly comfortable uh, because my own background uh, was of a disadvantaged family. I, I enjoyed making the home visits, and I, I think I was welcome. I, uh, I do have memories of my home, which was uh, uh, in a section of Maslin that was called Sippo Hollow. And it was an integrated neighborhood. That was important, too, because we had, uh, we had all nationalities on that street. At least three of the four families that would be the closest neighbors were black families. Uh, and so uh, 
I, I grew up with uh, um, uh, never any kind of feeling that they were any different than we were. And that, that has been a great blessing in my life that I've not had to, uh, to relate uh, in any different way to uh, people of other nationalities or color or ethnicity. Mm-hmm. So, so that was a that was a very fortunate, mm-hmm. really fortunate, uh, to uh, to be born poor. <laughs> I think that's a great, great feature and that asset that Thelma has is that she just makes you feel important. And we all need that. for students to come in. I also meet with people who are willing to be volunteers. Also meeting with people who are willing to become members of the commission. Those who will become uh, tutors, some of them, you know, their duties and the materials that they might be using. Identifying, uh, not all of them are business partners, some of them are organizations or church groups or that sort of thing that are willing to uh, make a financial contribution. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm paid no salary, of course, but uh, for many of the other things, like buying books for students and so on, uh, we need to have uh, uh, contributors. Well, a lot of it is just touching base with uh, those that want to join us in eradicating illiteracy in, in our community. Here we go. Have a picture taken. Dick was one of my students. Um, we uh, go to the gym together. What else do we do? Together? Well, we see you. I see at the library over in Canton. Yes, you do. <laughs> but uh, I was. She was. First year she taught, I was in her class. And we, we, we're the ones that broke her in as a teacher. That's exactly right. Okay. Well, I see mo- I've see seen many, many of my students uh, that I uh, was a teacher for or a counselor for in Camden. I see them coming into the library. I see them everywhere that I uh, go uh, throughout the city. And it is surprising how many of them remember me. I just uh, uh, enjoy uh, helping people uh, who, uh, whose uh, educational opportunities have been limited and uh, who are still eager to learn, eager to learn how to read, and then once they have acquired those skills, then to be able to read anything uh, that they were interested in. And, and so uh, uh, that's uh, the goal of every teacher. Uh, and uh, I just felt I was born to be a teacher, and uh, that's the way my life has just uh, progressed with every kind of opportunity to teach. <laughs>